Welcome to week 12 of Explore the Bible. Today we're in our last study in the book of Colossians. So we're going to finish out uh, chapter 3 and into the beginning of chapter 4 in Colossians. Next week we go to Philemon. Uh, we'll spend one week just in the whole book of Philemon. It's not bad. It's just one chapter. But today we're going to finish out Colossians in a great passage as we talk about what it means to, to walk with Christ outside of the church. When you get outside of the building, in the relationships that you have, how do, how do you show your Christianity? Christianity is, is most apparent in our lives, not in the church, but outside the church within relationships, especially these close relationships we have at home and at work and, and with friends in the world. How we live with those closest to us really reveals what's happening on the inside of our walk with God, our trust in Him, our obedience to Him, our faith in Him. Uh, so these areas of life, uh, you know, in the family and at work, um, these verses speak to them very, very closely and very clearly in how we should go. Now, there's also a phrase that I want you to notice in this passage. It's in the Lord. We see it a few times. It shows up in the Lord. So uh, that, that's important for us because he's talking about these Christian relationships that we have and how we act as believers. All right, let's go. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and don't be bitter toward them. Children, Obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not exasperate your children so that they won't become discouraged. Okay, so he speaks, you know, about home between husband and wife. The wife should submit herself. This is a voluntary um, um, submission to the leadership. It's a respect for the role of the husband in the family, right? Um, it's a voluntary act, Christian humility, because this is right, not because that person is better, it's not the role of a, of a child to a parent. This is the role of a wife to a husband, right? So, so it's a voluntary decision that you make, a, a giving as is fitting in the Lord, right? As is fitting in the Lord in the Christian home, right? Bring some clarity to Ephesians 5, uh, which talks about, you know, submitting to one another and then says, wives, submit to your husbands. Here, it's just by itself. Wives, submit yourselves to your husband. So this voluntary placing yourself under the leadership of the husband. And the husband should love his wife, right? Not to be bitter to them, but but at love sacrificially, unconditionally, selflessly, just like God loves, the same way the Lord loves. That's the model for the husband and how to love your wife as God loves us, right? It's a huge difference between uh, loving leadership and dictatorial domination. Uh, so sometimes people just jump to, well, if this is why I submit, that's the husband as a dictator. But that's not it at all. This is a picture of a, of a husband lovingly leading his wife while she willingly submits to that leadership. And, and it's easier to submit because he's loving her selflessly. He's giving everything for her, right? There's a, a story that a doctor uh, uh, writes about um, the surgery that he performs on a woman and where he has to remove a tumor from her face, and when he does so, he he has to um, cut the nerve that that uh, a facial nerve that allows her to to move her mouth on one side, and where where it's almost like she has palsy uh, on one side of her face. And um, he talks about how he's he's there with the with the young husband and the young lady in, in the hospital room after the surgery. And he's watching them as they look at one another. And she asked him, will my face always look like this? And he says, yes, I'm afraid it always will. And, and uh, he's, you know, he's disappointed by that. And she looks at her husband and, and um, she says, you know, what does it look like? How do I look? And he says, I think it looks cute. I like it. And then he kind of bends down to kiss her and in doing so twists his mouth so that he can match her lips with his lips to show her that that kiss is still the same. And, and the doctor said he, he looks down. He, he, can't, he can't continue looking at them because he feels like he's in the presence of God, you know, at that moment. And he sees how she shows, he shows her his great love because of the way that he's willing to kiss her. And he loves her, right? This is the love from a husband to a wife. Don't become bitter. Bitterness, harshness, anger is the opposite of love. Don't do that. Between a parent and a child, this relationship. Children, obey your parents 
in everything, for this pleases the Lord. One of the things that I'll, I'll tell kids is, look, you need, you need to obey your parents because your parents are right 95% of the time. In the 5% that they're wrong, you're not smart enough to know what it is. So you just obey them all the time, okay? Uh, we parent, Children need to obey their uh, parents because authority in the home is essential to the orderliness of society. When there's no authority in the home, the lack of obedience um, at home follows itself to school, it follows itself to work, it follows itself in every area of life. And, and there is a point here too where it's you know parents don't exasperate your children so that they don't become discouraged that that sometimes the lack of obedience in the home is not a revelation about the child but a revelation about the parents who haven't parented their children in a way uh, the children acting out doesn't create problems it reveals the problems that are already there so so don't I mean, be consistent. Be consistent in how you're how you're disciplining your children, how you're raising them up, how you're, uh, and and be fair with them, uh, by what age they are, their capabilities, what what they can do at the age they're at. Be fair with them in all those ways, right? Don't exasperate them. That's changing your mind all the time, changing the rules, changing the boundaries, or asking things of them they're not capable of doing. If you're if you're demanding that your two-year-old clean up their room, let me tell you, a two-year-old doesn't know how to clean up a room. They might be able to put some things in one from one place to another, you can, but don't just send them to the room, go clean your room. It ain't gonna happen, you know? And if you're, if you're demanding on them things that they're not capable of doing, they get discouraged. And so they stop doing everything, okay? But there is definitely order within the family that the parents are to be obeyed and the children are to obey. The parents are the authority. The kids are not. And then he goes to work, right? Slaves, obey your human masters and everything. Okay, listen. This is not an endorsement of slavery. This is a recognition of the way the world was. In fact, this is the way most of the world was up until the last 200 years. Most of the world was like this really the last 175 years, 50 years. You know, this is the way it was. And, and you know, maybe maybe sometimes we think, well, why didn't they call for an end to slavery? Well, the fact is, is that the Christian church at this time was a minority in a world that was not a democracy. They, they didn't have much of a voice in changing the culture, but what they had to deal with was the culture and the people in it as it was. And, and the one thing that I will point out to you is that he writes, slaves obey your human masters to to the church in Colossae. So now this what happens is this letter gets read aloud in church. So people are reading it. So here's what we know. There are women in the church. There are children in the church as well as men. And there are slaves in the church, which means that, that they have been exalted to a place in the church that they did not have in society. So, you know, I think those who, who want to be woke on Christianity and try to talk about the evils of Christianity not changing the, the world as it was then and that, that it endorses slavery are, are completely missing what actually happened in the real world. And the call to the, Christi, to the, to the church is to be honest with the society and be a, be, to speak truth to power, but it's also to ultimately, primarily, to spread the gospel to everybody wherever they are. Okay, so that's my deal on that. I could go longer, but I won't. Slaves, obey your human masters in everything. Don't work only while being watched as people pleasers, but work wholeheartedly fearing the Lord as to the Lord, right? Whatever you do, do it from the heart as something done for the Lord and not for people, knowing that you will receive the reward of an inheritance from the Lord. You serve the Lord Christ. Man, I want you to see this elevation of slavery and the work of a slave where he's elevating it to this is work for the Lord, okay? But I want us to think about this within the idea of employment, okay, today, because that's the world we live in now. Look, don't just work while you're being watched. Work all the time. Don't be a people pleaser, but work wholeheartedly fearing the Lord because the Lord's watching all the time. People may not always see you, but the Lord sees you. You're serving him, right? So whatever you do, you do it from the heart as something done for the Lord and not for people. Understand that your work, your work ethic is not something that you're just doing for people, but you're serving ultimately the Lord, right? Knowing that you will receive the reward of inheritance from the Lord. The Lord's going to give you a blessing based on what you're doing because he's watching and he's watching all the time, not just when other people are around, right? You serve the Lord Christ. You're not just serving your boss. You're not just working for the man. You are serving God. So do this work wholeheartedly. 
And this is a raising of the, and an endorsement of work ethic in a raising of the place for slaves here, a raising uh, an equally uh, of the ground, right? All in the same place, because look what he says, masters, deal with your slaves justly and fairly, since you know you too have a master in heaven. You've got a God watching you, masters. Y'all are on the same ground here, so how you treat those who work for you is, is important. Justice is important, okay? It is important, and how you treat people who work for you is important. How you treat those who are under you is extremely important. So we need to have justice. There needs to be fairness, right? It is important. Okay. We're going to move on because we don't have much time. We've still got a lot to go. That's work and family now life, right? Devote yourselves to prayer. Stay alert in it with thanksgiving. I love this thanksgiving. You know that thankfulness and thanksgiving shows up in every chapter of Colossians. It's in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4. Thankfulness for the Christian is always there. I, I, don't miss that. Thanksgiving's coming up. We should not miss that, right? Devote yourselves to prayer. Stay alert in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open a door to us for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains so that I may make it known as I should. I love this, okay? You know, devote yourselves to prayer. Be in prayer at all times. Always pray and devote. Be persistent, steadfast. Be faithful to pray. Uh, a prayerful attitude is not a substitute for a prayerful time. We need both, right? Uh, and and look for open doors. Pray for open doors. Pray that God may open a door to us for the word, to speak the mystery of Christ. Pray that God would open a door. Um, you know, there was a, a Christian movie that came out years ago, Facing the Giants, maybe one of the first big Christian movies that came out. And, and in it, there's a scene where where uh, the preacher uh, tells the coach to, to pray for rain and plow the fields, right? <laughs> you pray for rain, but you plow the fields. You do the work. You do everything you can, and you pray that God will bless. Right? You do your part. So, so we're always looking for an open door, looking for an opportunity, praying that God will, but we're ready. We're, we're ready always to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains, that I may make it known as I should, right? I love this, um, that we take advantage of every opportunity, every opportunity to speak, because, because we have to reveal this mystery of Christ, that for, for those who are lost, uh, Christianity is a mystery. The gospel is a mystery, and our job is to reveal this mystery that is there, right? To make it known, as I should. And, and just love this again, Paul asking the church to pray for him, that he'll have boldness. You think we shouldn't pray for boldness? Finally, okay, act wisely towards outsiders, making the most of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you should answer each person. Full of grace, seasoned with salt. You're not heard, then you haven't acted wisely, right? We have to act wisely before other people so that we can, uh, so that our speech will be heard. If we don't act wisely, they're not going to listen to what we have to say. If we don't act in a way that, that is virtuous, they don't care what we have to say, right? Uh, this passage assumes that the church will speak as well as act, right, towards the saving message while accepting that not everybody's called to preach, but we're all called to live and speak and share the gospel, right? Let your speech always be gracious, be kind, be generous. Man, I think the world needs more graciousness and generosity today, and the church ought to be leading in this. But seasoned with salt, that is not not so mealy mouth, not so um, bland that, that it doesn't mean anything, that it doesn't sometimes spark conversation, sometimes spark um, argumentation, not not doing it on purpose, but doing it because it is truth. And sometimes when we speak truth, it that's salt in a wound, right? So that you may know how you should answer each person. We we've got to spend time talking to people to figure out how to talk to people. You know, the reason that some of us struggle with how to share the share our faith is because we haven't shared our faith enough to learn from our mistakes. So let me just say, just share your faith and then learn from your mistakes. It's okay. Say what you need to say. Try saying whatever it can be said. And then, hey, you made mistakes, learn from them. That's what we do. That's what we need to do. All right? Man, there's a lot. There's just so much here. I hope that's helped. How we live outside the church is so important. It's, it, it is the expression, true expression of our Christian faith. 
Thanks for watching. God bless you. Thanks for teaching. I really appreciate you and, and all of that. Be sure and like. Be sure and comment. Let me know how God's teaching you through this. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already. All right? And uh, we'll see you next week in Philemon.